Hey guys, this is Amber Rain Davis with NotableInk.com and I am back with a Hedgehog Hollow today. Today we're going to be creating an easy watercolor wash background. When I was done with it, it really kind of looked like the Aurora Borealis to me, really kind of bright and unique um, textures to it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using the August 2019 box, which was a collaboration with Alex Siberia Designs. I will have her information as well as all of the supplies that I used linked in the comment section down below. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and take a moment to do that and we'll get right into it. So I have a piece of my favorite, favorite watercolor paper. This is Saunders Waterford High White Rough Paper. Now I originally bought this paper because it's whiter than most um, watercolor papers and because I make cards I want it to be really white I don't want a yellowish looking watercolor paper on my bright white card basis so that's why I originally purchased this but what I found is that I love how this paper performs if you if you look there you can see that the color just moves so easily on its own with a lot without a lot of effort for me so I started by putting down a coat of clean clear water with a wide one inch brush and I'm just adding the colors with a number six round brush and um, I will show you the back sides of these watercolor pans after I'm done with the panel so that you know the specific colors that I'm using. So I've got this really pretty vibrant purpley fuchsia color. I'm adding a little bit of aquamarine here. And these watercolors are less transparent, at least some of them are, and a little bit more like gouache. They have a kind of more opaque consistency to them. Um, so just something a little bit different to play with. So what I'm gonna do is keep building up the colors. I'm going to mix some of the colors on the paper by going over some of the fuchsia with the teal. I'm also gonna add in a darker teal. And in after I'm pretty happy with the panel, I'm gonna dry it with my heat tool. The color dries back quite a bit, so then I'm gonna come in with a second layer. So as I continue to color, I'll go ahead and pop some music on and then I'll grab you back once the watercolor panel is done.
So I think there were a number of places I could have stopped because it didn't really look too much different as I continued to add color, but I was really just playing around and it was so easy to create this panel. So the colors I used were 50, 57 was the dark blue and 37 was the purple. And so now I'm just gonna take my stamp package and figure out where I want to stamp this large floral and where I want my sentiments. So I'm gonna die cut it with a deckle edge die from Honeybee Stamps. I'm just gonna condition my stamp with an eraser, just lightly rubbing it so that it takes the ink better. And I thought I was going to use Cosmic Berry. This is an Alta New ink, but it was a little too purple for me. So I switched to Purple Wine, which is also in the same color family, but it has a little more pink to it. And I felt like that matched the paint much better. So I'll go ahead and stamp this on. So this is a really good technique. Again, if you maybe are not a colorist or maybe a bloom this large is intimidating for you to color, this is a really easy technique to get tons of color in the background and still be able to use those large floral outline stamps. So I have a couple sentiments here from Concord and Ninth, and I just went through my stash to find something that would fit in the space. And I loved the boldness of the script font here. So I'm just gonna stamp that twice in the same color. And here I'm trying to pick my blues. I'm either gonna use Galactic Stream or, what's the name of the other one? I'll think of it in a minute. So I started with Galactic Stream, then I felt like that wasn't quite dark enough. And then I came in with Desert Night is the name of the other color. Again, those are Alta New inks as well. And I added a few sequins that I had from my stash and that is the final card. I hope that you guys enjoyed this project today. I had a blast just pulling out my watercolors and playing with them and seeing what back, kind of background I could create. It was really simple to do and really didn't require much skill at all to be able to do it. I would say if you're struggling getting your colors to blend or move, really take a look at your watercolor paper. I've found the paper that I use makes the biggest difference more than anything else. All of the supplies are listed down below and if you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. That's the best way that you can support my channel so that I can bring new content. Hit that bell button so that you get notified of new content. Thanks so much for joining me today and until next time, breathe, ink, inspire.